Anaxagoras, Greek, Anaxagoras Anaxagoras, Lord of the Assembly, c. 510 c. 428 BC, was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher. Born in Clazomenae at a time when Asia Minor was under the control of the Persian Empire, Anaxagoras came to Athens. According to Diogenes Laetius and Plutarch, in later life he was charged with impiety and went into exile in Lampsicus. The charges may have been political, owing to his association with Pericles, if they were not fabricated by later ancient biographers. Responding to the claims of Parmenides on the impossibility of change, Anaxagoras described the world as a mixture of primary imperishable ingredients, where material variation was never caused by an absolute presence of a particular ingredient, but rather by its relative preponderance over the other ingredients, in his words, "...each one is most manifestly those things of which there are the most in it." He introduced the concept of nous cosmic mind as an ordering force, which moved and separated out the original mixture, which was homogeneous, or nearly so. He also gave a number of novel scientific accounts of natural phenomena. He produced a correct explanation for eclipses and described the Sun as a fiery mass larger than the Peloponnese, as well as attempting to explain rainbows and meteors. Biography <inaudible> 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 Anaxagoras is believed to have enjoyed some wealth and political influence in his native town of Clazomenae. However, he supposedly surrendered this out of a fear that they would hinder his search for knowledge. The Roman author Valerius Maximus preserves a different tradition. Anaxagoras, coming home from a long voyage, found his property in ruin, and said, If this had not perished, I would have. A sentence described by Valerius as being Possessed of sought after wisdom. Anaxagoras was a Greek citizen of the Persian Empire and had served in the Persian army. He may have been a member of the Persian regiments that entered mainland Greece during the Greco Persian Wars. Though this remains uncertain, it would certainly explain why he came to Athens in the year of Salamis, 480 79 BC. Anaxagoras is said to have remained in Athens for thirty years. Pericles learned to love and admire him, and the poet Euripides derived from him an enthusiasm for science and humanity. Anaxagoras brought philosophy and the spirit of scientific inquiry from Ionia to Athens. His observations of the celestial bodies and the fall of meteorites led him to form new theories of the universal order, and to a putative prediction of the impact of a meteorite in 467. He attempted to give a scientific account of eclipses, meteors, rainbows, and the sun, which he described as a mass of blazing metal, larger than the Peloponnese. The heavenly bodies, he asserted, were masses of stone torn from the earth and ignited by rapid rotation. He was the first to give a correct explanation of eclipses, and was both famous and notorious for his scientific theories, including the claims that the sun is a mass of red-hot metal, that the moon is earthy, and that the stars are fiery stones. He thought the Earth was flat and floated supported by strong air under it and disturbances in this air sometimes caused earthquakes. These speculations made him vulnerable in Athens to a charge of impiety. Diogenes Laetius reports the story that he was prosecuted by Cleon for impiety, but Plutarch says that Pericles sent his former tutor, Anaxagoras, to Lampsicus for his own safety after the Athenians began to blame him for the Peloponnesian War. According to Laetius, Pericles spoke in defense of Anaxagoras at his trial, c. 450. Even so, Anaxagoras was forced to retire from Athens to Lampsicus in Trode c. 434–433. He died there in around the year 428. Citizens of Lampsicus erected an altar to mind and truth in his memory, and observed the anniversary of his death for many years. 
Anaxagoras wrote a book of philosophy, but only fragments of the first part of this have survived, through preservation in work of Simplicius of Cilicia in the 6th century AD. Philosophy According to Anaxagoras all things have existed in some way from the beginning, but originally they existed in infinitesimally small fragments of themselves, endless in number and inextricably combined throughout the universe. All things existed in this mass, but in a confused and indistinguishable form. There was an infinite number of homogeneous parts as well as heterogeneous ones, the work of arrangement, the segregation of like from unlike and the summation of the whole into totals of the same name, was the work of mind or reason. Mind is no less unlimited than the chaotic mass, but it stood pure and independent, a thing of finer texture, alike in all its manifestations and everywhere the same. This subtle agent, possessed of all knowledge and power, is especially seen ruling in all the forms of life. Its first appearance, and the only manifestation of it which Anaxagoras describes, is motion. It gave distinctness and reality to the aggregates of like parts. Decease and growth represent a new aggregation, syncresis and disruption. However, the original intermixture of things is never wholly overcome. Each thing contains in itself parts of other things or heterogeneous elements, and is what it is, only on account of the preponderance of certain homogeneous parts which constitute its character. Out of this process arise the things we see in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Literary references Anaxagoras is mentioned by Socrates during his trial in Plato's Apology. In the Phaedo, Plato portrays Socrates saying of Anaxagoras that as a young man, I eagerly acquired his books and read them as quickly as I could. In a quote chosen to begin Nathaniel West's first book, The Dream Life of Balso Snell, Marcel Proust's character Burgot says, after all, my dear fellow, life, Anaxagoras has said, is a journey." Anaxagoras appears as a character in Faust, Part II by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Anaxagoras appears as a character in The Ionia Sanction, by Gary Corby. Anaxagoras is referred to and admired by Cyrus Spidamer, the hero and narrator of Creation, by Gore Vidal. The book contains this passage, explaining how Anaxagoras became influential. According to Anaxagoras, one of the largest things is a hot stone that we call the sun. When Anaxagoras was very young, he predicted that sooner or later a piece of the sun would break off and fall to earth. Twenty years ago, he was proved right. The whole world saw a fragment of the sun fall in a fiery arc through the sky, landing near Agospotami in Thrace. When the fiery fragment cooled, it proved to be nothing more than a chunk of brown rock. Overnight Anaxagoras was famous. Today his book is read everywhere. You can buy a second-hand copy in the Agora for a drachma. William H. Gass begins his novel, The Tunnel, 1995, with a quote from Anaxagoras. The descent to hell is the same from every place. He is also mentioned in Seneca's Natural Questions, Book 4b, originally Book 3, on clouds, hail, snow. It reads, "Why should I too allow myself the same liberty as Anaxagoras allowed himself?" Dante Alighieri places Anaxagoras in the first circle of hell limbo in his Divine Comedy Inferno, Canto IV, line 118. See also Anaxagoras crater on the Moon Squaring the circle Topic Notes Topic Bibliography 
Copleston, Frederick Charles, 2003. IX: The Advance of Anaxagoras. A History of Philosophy, Volume 1, Greece and Rome, reprint. Continuum. ISBN 978-0826468956 Editions of the Fragments Kurd, Patricia ed. Anaxagoras of Clazomenae. Fragments and Testimonia, a text and translation with notes and essays, Toronto, University of Toronto Press, 2007. Cider, David ed. The Fragments of Anaxagoras, with introduction, text, and commentary, St. Augustine, Academia for Larg, 2005. Kirk G. S., Raven, J. E. and Schofield, M. 1983. The Presocratic Philosophers, A Critical History with a Selection of Texts second ed. Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, ISBN 0-521-25444-2, originally authored by Kirk and Raven and published in 1957 OCLC 870519. Topic studies Bacalis Nikolaos 2005. Handbook of Greek Philosophy, From Thales to the Stoics Analysis and Fragments, Trafford Publishing, Victoria, B.C., ISBN 1-4120-4843-5 Barnes J. The Presocratic Philosophers, Routledge, London, ISBN 0-7100-8860-4, and editions of 1982, 1996 and 2006 Burnett J. Early Greek Philosophy A and C Black, London, OCLC 4365382, and subsequent editions, 2003 edition published by Kessinger, Whitefish, Montana, ISBN 0-7661-2826-1 Cleave, Felix M. The Philosophy of Anaxagoras, An Attempt at Reconstruction King's Crown Press, New York OCLC 2,690-2674, republished in 1973 by Nijoff, The Hague, as The Philosophy of Anaxagoras, as reconstructed ISBN 90-247-1573-3 Davison, J. A. Protagoras, Democtitus, and Anaxagoras. Classical Quarterly. 3 ends, 33–45. DOI, 10.1017 per seconds 00098388000025855. Philonic, Jacob, 2013. Athenian Impiety Trials, a reappraisal. Dyke, Rivista di Storia del Dorito Greco ed Ellenistico 16. DOI, 10, 13,131,128 8, 4,290th Gershenson, Daniel E. and Greenberg, Daniel A. 1964, Anaxagoras and the Birth of Physics, Blaisdell Publishing Co., New York, OCLC 899834 Graham, Daniel West 1999. Empedocles and Anaxagoras, Responses to Parmenides Chapter 8 of Long, AA 1999, The Cambridge Companion to Early Greek Philosophy Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, pp. 159–180, ISBN 0-521-44667-8 Guthrie, WKC the Presocratic Tradition from Parmenides to Democritus Volume 2 of A History of Greek Philosophy Cambridge University Press, Cambridge OCLC 4679552, 1978 edition ISBN 0-521-29421-5 Guthrie, WKC A History of Greek Philosophy. 2. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Luchter, James 2011. Early Greek Thought, Before the Dawn. London, Bloomsbury Publishing. ISBN 978-0567353313. Mansfield, J. 1980. 
the chronology of Anaxagoras Athenian period and the date of his trial. Nemosin. 33–17–95. DOI, 10.1163-1568525800X00271. Sandywell, Barry Presocratic Reflexivity, The Construction of Philosophical Discourse, c. 600–450 BC. 3. London, Routledge. Schofield, Malcolm 1980. An Essay on Anaxagoras. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Taylor, A. E. 1917. On the Date of the Trial of Anaxagoras. Classical Quarterly. 11, 281–87. DOI, 10.1017, S0009838800013094. Taylor, C. C. W. Ed. 1997. Routledge History of Philosophy, From the Beginning to Plato, Vol. I, pp. 192–225, ISBN 0-415-06272-1 Tier Dawson, Sven Tage Anaxagoras Theory of Matter. Acta Universitatis Gothobergensis, Göteborg, Sweden, ISBN 91-7346-111-3 Torrijos Castrolejo, David Anaxagoras y su recepción en Aristoteles. Rome, edusc, ISBN 978-88-8333-325-5 in Spanish Wright, Mr. Cosmology in Antiquity. London, Routledge. Zeller, A. 1881. A History of Greek Philosophy, From the Earliest Period to the Time of Socrates, Vol. 2. Translated by S. F. Allen, pp. 321–394. External links Kurd, Patricia. Anaxagoras. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Anaxagoras entry by Michael Patsia in the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. O'Connor, John J., Robertson, Edmund F. Anaxagoras. MacTutor History of Mathematics Archive, University of St. Andrews. Laetius, Diogenes 1925. Socrates, with predecessors and followers, Anaxagoras. Lives of the Eminent Philosophers. 1–2. Translated by Hicks, Robert Drew 2 volume ed. Loeb Classical Library. Translation and commentary from John Burnett's Early Greek Philosophy Anaxagoras, Fragments from Early Greek Philosophy by John Burnett, 3rd edition 1920. Works by or about Anaxagoras at Internet Archive Works by Anaxagoras at LibriVox public domain audiobooks.